Hello, I'm Junior Kim from Yonsei University. Today, I'm going to talk to you about our paper titled Instability of Successive Deep Image Compression. This is joint work with my colleagues Su Bam Zhang and Juno Che and advisor Jong Sung Lee. Let's start with the definition of successive image compression. In this paper, it means repeating the process of encoding and decoding an image, which occurs in various applications. Consider the case of an image processing application, for example. It first decodes an encoded image taken by a camera or shared by another user. Then, it performs image manipulation like cropping. Finally, it re-encodes the manipulated image, and this process implicitly involves successive image compression. As multimedia and communication technology advance, the environment for image production, editing, and distribution is readily available to general users. For this reason, successive image compression occurs more often than before. Recently, deep learning has been applied to Lucy image compression. I'd like to remind you about the overview of a typical deep learning based method. First, the convolutional encoder transforms an original image into latent features. After the quantization, they go through the two passes. First, through the entropy estimator, the model defines a loss function related to compression rate. As you can see, the convolutional decoder reconstructs the image, where a distortion-related loss function is defined. Finally, the total loss function is defined using these two loss terms. Under single-step compression, most deep learning based methods outperform conventional ones like JPEG. However, the problem is all the existing methods do not consider successive image compression. These are our contributions. First, we introduce a new observation instability of deep learning based successive image compression. Second, we present comprehensive analysis of the instability. Lastly, we propose a method to mitigate the instability. Now, I'll introduce what happened during successive deep image compression. For this, we use some sample images. And we use four state-of-the-art models, and also employ the JPEG compression as a reference. We conduct the experiments with 50 repetitions. Then, what will happen to the decoded images? Here, I'm going to talk about some really surprising results. In this figure, each curve shows the PSNR changes for each compression model. The black one is JPEG, and the others are 4D models. As you can see, under single-step compression, most D models outperform the JPEG compression. However, this situation does not hold under successive image compression. This is the visual result of JPEG, and these are the visual results of D models after 50 repetitions. They show significantly severe instability in terms of various viewpoints, such as degree, region, and type of image distortion. The really surprising phenomena raise a question. What causes the instability? This shows the single-step compression. Here, RC denotes the rounding and clipping operation for image reconstruction. And this is successive image compression with two repetitions. In order to investigate the causes of the instability, we analyze this condition. 
Let's assume a situation where this part is an identity function. The assumption makes the following simplification. And here, because of idempotence of quantization, it can be further reduced as follows. As a result, this equality can be achieved. Now, I'll discuss the assumption in more detail. First, we answer this question. For the JPEG compression, it can be ignored according to the previous work. We conducted a t-test and found that it also holds for D models. Since the rounding and grouping operations can be ignored, now we analyze the two remaining parts. First, for the JPEG compression, the transform functions of decoder and encoder are inverse discrete cosine transform and discrete cosine transform, respectively. As a result, this structure becomes the identity function. On the other hand, for the models, both transform functions are determined by their training process. For this reason, the structure cannot be guaranteed to be the identity function. As a result, more severe instability occurs compared to the JPEG compression. Then, what affects the instability? To analyze the factors affecting the instability, we conduct the benchmark for seven state of the art methods. For a clear comparison, we categorize our models into four groups depending on the average bit rates, denoted as very low, low, mid, and high. Here, each curve indicates each D model. The circle indicates the result at the single step compression. This line means the personal change during successive image compression. And this star shows the result after 50 repetitions. The figure is summarized as follows. Different patterns are shown depending on the method. For most cases, the PSNR drop is accompanied by the dropout bitrate. Sometimes, you can also see that bitrate increases over repetitions, which is shown in the blue colored method. We found that there are two main factors affecting the instability. One is the entropy estimation model, and the other is the type of distortion-related loss function. First, we found that entropy estimation models are the most important, the worst and second worst performance, showing large quality degradation. This is because they don't use any entropy estimation models for training. And the pink colored method utilizes the most improved entropy model, which show relatively high robustness against successive image compression. These are the visual results of the three models. As you can see, the method with more advanced entropy estimation models show higher robustness. Next, we found that the distortion-related losses for training are also influential. These are the results of the models training with the mean scale error loss function. And these are the results after training the same models using multi-scale structural similarity loss function. You can see that the patterns of the instability are different depending on the loss function for training. For the left case, the model training with the mean scaled error loss function generates structural distortion, while the mo model training with multi-scale structural similarity 
generates color distortion. And for the right case, the region of distortion is this different. The model training with multiscale structural similarity tends to produce image distortion near the border. Furthermore, we found that the instability can be exacerbated in practical situations. First, let's consider the situation where cropping is applied before compression. These are the visual results of successive image compression for different cropped input passes. The numbers in parentheses indicate the positions in the original image. You can see that the instability is sensitive to image contents even at the level of one pixel shift. Second, let's consider variable compression conditions where the degree of compression changes at each repetition. So far, we have confirmed the instability under constant conditions, which is shown in the blue box. As you can see in the red box, under the variable conditions, more severe degradation is observed. Now, we propose a solution to mitigate the instability. We already mentioned that training-based method cannot guarantee the assumption that the following structure is the identity function. Even worse, existing D models do not define an objective function that assumption. Although the distortion-related loss considered both encoder and decoder, it models the opposite direction of what you want. To solve this, we propose a simple yet effective method. First, we re-encode the output images using the same encoder. And we define the new loss function between the two latent features called feature identity loss function. Note that it can be easily incorporated into existing methods. To demonstrate its effectiveness, we apply our method to train the two state-of-the-art methods. The dotted line indicates the models without our method, and the solid line indicates the models to which our method is applied. The results show that the models trained with our feature identity function exhibit improved robustness against successive image compression. In particular, the effectiveness of our method is prominent in the high bitrate group, where the instability occurs most according to our benchmark. This is our conclusion. First, we introduced the instability issue of the models under successive image compression. Our work is the first attempt to investigate this issue. Second, we raised the issue of instability, discussed its causes, and conducted a successive image compression benchmark. Lastly, we propose a simple and effective solution to mitigate the instability. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.